depths of the forest, the wind begins to rush against the fragile tree branches. A shrieking howl can be heard. It starts as a low, chilling moan, and continues to rise in both power and terror, until it climaxes in a blood curdling horror. A sense of dread consumes you as you realize you are not alone in these woods. But it's too late. The Wendigo has found you. What is a Wendigo? The Wendigo is a product of Aquinian folklore and is a beast that was feared by all. The legend describes the nightmarish creature as having pale, ashy skin stretched like a latex suit over the jutting spurs of protruding bones. Its glassy eyes, vacant as they are with brooding evil, reflect the moon from sunken black sockets. A visceral smell oozes from its flesh, rich with rot and fresh metallic blood. As the beast stalks its prey from a looming height of 15 feet in the inky darkness of the forest, this unsettling image damned the souls of those who claim to have faced the creature in the flesh. In ancient North American legend, the monster exists as the byproduct of cannibalism or dark magic. In some myth variations, people can also become a Wendigo after merely in coming into contact with another. Alternatively, the creature could possess them in a dream, and after it takes control of the host, the beast assumes the identity of the person. The Wendigo is known for its insatiable greed and hunger for human flesh. The Wendigo is often depicted as a demonic spirit that has the power over winter storms and weather events. Because of this, the creature is often associated with the harsh winters of the north. It is said that an angry Wendigo can cause the sky to darken and extreme weather such as tornadoes and blizzards. Different versions of the Wendigo legend say different things about his speed and agility. Some claim he is unusually fast and can endure walking for long periods of time, even in the bitter winter conditions. Others say he walks in a more haggard manner, as if he is falling apart. But speed wouldn't be a necessary skill for a monster of this nature. Unlike other terrifying predators, the Wendigo doesn't rely on pursuing his prey in order to capture and eat it. Rather, one of his creepiest traits is his ability to mimic human voices. He uses his skill to lure people in and draw them away from civilization. Once they're isolated in the desolate depths of the wilderness, he attacks them and feasts on them. Sightings of the Wendigo are mostly confined to the late 19th century. One of the most infamous cases is the story of Swift Runner, a Native American man who murdered and ate his whole family. In the winter of 1878 to 79, Swift Runner took his family, including his wife, six children, mother-in-law and brother, out into the wilderness to a hunting camp. Only Swift Runner returned in the spring. He said his wife had committed suicide and the others died of starvation. Swift Runner appeared well fed and in good shape. His anxious in-laws asked the police to investigate. The police then travelled with Swift Runner to his family's camp in the wilderness, north of Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta. Swift Runner brought a detachment of mounted police to the camp. He showed them the grave of his eldest son. The police opened the grave and found the bones undisturbed. There were human bones scattered around the encampment, some broken in half and hollowed out. That could only mean one thing. Someone had snapped them open and sucked out the bone marrow. They found a pot full of human fat. Swift Runner identified one of the skulls as belonging to his wife. A small muskin had been stuffed inside the skull of Swift Runner's mother-in-law, a beading needle still sticking out of the unfinished work. Without much prodding, Swift Runner revealed what happened to his family. At first, Swift Runner became haunted by dreams. A Wendigo spirit called on him to consume the people around him. The spirit crept through his mind, gradually taking control. Finally, he became a Wendigo. As a Wendigo, he then went on to kill and eat Swift Runner's wife and eventually cooked and ate the rest of his family. The police didn't believe Swift Runner resorted to cannibalism out of hunger. Emergency food supplies were close by a Hudson's Bay post, which was 25 miles away. Swift Runner believed that he had become a Wendigo. The police 
thought he was just a killer cannibal. He may have been suffering from Wendigo psychosis, a psychiatric disorder associated with the Algonquian speaking peoples. It manifests itself through compulsive attacks and a craving for human flesh. Regardless of this, for these acts, Swift Runner was hanged for his crimes. Around the same time, another indigenous man from the Cree tribe of northwestern Ontario, named Jack Fiddler, recounted his experience with the beast to a missionary. He claimed to have been a hunter with a speciality in killing Wendigos. He asserted to have killed 14 during his life and was a self-proclaimed shaman with superhuman abilities, helping him to defeat these ethereal horrors. However, in a morbid turn, authorities arrested Fiddler and his brother for killing a woman. The two claimed she was a Wendigo in the process of transforming after consuming human flesh. Jack, the shaman, escaped but committed suicide soon after. His brother, although acquitted, died of illness in prison just days before his release. Chillingly, there were quite a few other stories around the spirits supposedly possessing people in communities stretching from northern Quebec to the Rockies. Many of these reports were frighteningly akin to the Swift Runner case. Whether you believe the Wendigo lurks in the woods at night or not, this is not just another boogeyman story meant to scare people for no reason. It also has historical significance for many indigenous communities. The legend of the Wendigo has long been associated with real-life problems like insatiable greed, selfishness and violence. It's also linked to many cultural taboos against the negative actions and behaviours. Basically, the word Wendigo can also function as a symbol for gluttony and the image of excess. According to native author Basil H. Johnston, the idea of turning Wendigo is a very real possibility when the word refers to self-destruction rather than literally becoming a monster in the forest. According to the book Rewriting Apocalypse in Canadian Fiction, Wendigo stories were once viewed as an illustration of the violent and primitive nature of the very people telling those stories. But ironically enough, these stories might actually represent the indigenous people's response to the horrific violence unleashed upon them by non-native people. In fact, many anthropologists believe that the concept of a Wendigo only developed after the native people had contact with the Europeans. Rewriting Apocalypse adds that some modern day confusion about the Wendigo may have to do with certain terms getting lost in translation. One well-known mistake was traced to the compile of a dictionary who entered the information regarding the word Wendigo and substituted the word ghoul for the appropriate word of fool because he thought the native people instead meant ghoul. But what about those scary Wendigo stories that supposedly affected real people? Anthropologists also argue that Wendigo stories, especially those involving Wendigo accusations, are linked to stress within the Native American communities. The local tension leading up to such accusations may even be comparable to the fear that preceded the Salem Witch Trials. However, in the case of the Native American communities, most of the stress was due to a dwindling amount of resources, not to mention the extermination of food in the area, and under those circumstances, who could blame them for having a fear of starvation? So does the Wendigo exist? Is it truly a myth, a scary story, or does something sinister truly skulk in the vast Canadian wilds? The vast majority of supposed Wendigo sightings happened between the 1800s and 1920s. Few reports of the creature have surfaced since then. But every so often, an alleged sighting emerges. Most recently in 2019, mysterious howls in the Canadian wilderness led some to question whether they were caused by the infamous man-beast. One hiker present said, I've heard many different animals in the wild, but nothing like this. And so, still to this day, those who believe in the physical Wendigo believe he might still be out there in the woods, lurking in the darkness, waiting for a starving victim. So if you decide to go hiking, make sure to pack more than enough supplies, or you may just find yourself at the mercy of the Wendigo.